I'm with Yashwan Deshmukh, Director of Sea Voter, Sophologist, Political Analyst, and Kumar Ketkar, a former journalist, former editor of Divya Marathi, and now uh, Rajya Sabha MP with the Congress Party. And today, of course, we are discussing the Kahani Me twist in Maharashtra, almost like a Bollywood movie. Uh, Devendra Fadnavis, not the Chief Minister, that job has gone to Iknat Shinde. We all know the story, what happened has happened over the last few days. So let me welcome both of you to the print, Yeshwan Deshmukh and Kumar Ketkar. Thank you so much. Yeshwan, can I uh, start with you? What is your understanding, your explanation? What happened at the last minute? Devendra Fadnavis, the BJP leader, who basically was behind, in a sense, the Eknath Shinde split. How come he is Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra and Mr. Shinde is now Chief Minister? Well, first of all, Jyoti, expect, always expect the unexpected from, you know, the top leadership of the BJP. We have seen that uh, so many times. They have, uh, they have a genuinely, you know, uh, knack of giving the surprises in that way. Uh, but uh, looking back, uh, you know, after a really long time, I guess that uh, uh, I would say it, it, something got really interesting in political development in that. You know, जो पहले कहते थे कि यार थोड़ा सही दांव मारा। अब दांव is right or wrong that only the future can tell, but uh, it is very interesting because for a couple of reasons. That number one, uh, uh, Udav Thakre said that uh, uh, if any Shiv Sena becomes, I will uh, leave the chair of Chief Ministership and I will welcome. And he was of course not expecting BJP to give that chair to Shinde. You know that's why he was kind of poking BJP. Can you do that? I dare you do that. And you know, and there, okay, challenge accepted. BJP did that, mm. but uh, technically speaking, what I see from uh, from the uh, floor of the house and the movement and combinations, now that it has happened, there is no official division as far as Shiv Sena on the floor is concerned, mm. because it's another. I mean, basically, look at it this way: the Shiv Sena parliamentary port, ba- party on the floor of the uh, uh, assembly decided that they do not want. Uh, uh, um, Uddhav Thakre as the CM, they want Eknath Shinde as the CM. It's mm-hmm. as simple as that technical, on technical ground. Right. So, whatever now the new setup, you know, whenever they issue a whip, it is the other way around. Probably the 15 people with Uddhav Thakre are, have to, they actually have to follow that whip now. Mm-hmm. Because there is no division in the party. Now, this technicality of 15 people who have, or 11 people who had been Debarred and the Supreme Court is uh, still taking the. No, no, wait, let's talk about that a little bit later. I want to ask you what happened in Delhi. Why did Prime Minister Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah, BJP President JP Nadda, why did they decide that Devendra Fadnavis ko Chief Minister abhi nahi bana sakte? Uh, I think they decided on the recording that, okay, let, let's give it a turn and, you know, uh, let's flip it on because Uddhav Thakre, after his uh, speech on the Facebook and other things, was kind of gaining attraction among the Shiv Sena sympathizers and everybody. And now what they have done, that they have challenged that particular part because the, what the narrative that BJP is building, uh, you know, Jyoti, is that Shiv Sena was supposed to be far right on our right. Mm-hmm. And they have diluted, they have gone, tried to become secular. This is no more the Shiv Sena of Bala Sahib Thakre. And this is something different. So now they have kind of rebooted that system. And the new Shiv Sena leadership, if we call it, uh, is now trying to uh, get back that identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, This is why, while going out, uh, Uddhav Thakre renamed the two districts, you know, Sambhaji Nagar and other things. And they just to clutch up to that, you know, that no, I haven't forgotten. That's pretty much on my agenda. But uh, I think uh, uh, it is kind of that narrative that the BJP wanted to settle, that this uh, alliance was unnatural to start with. Shiv Sena was not supposed to be uh, so-called uh, secular. It was supposed to be completely Hindutva party. And Hindutva alliance was with the BJP. You asked for a mandate from the public of Maharashtra in the name of BJP Shiv Sena alliance. And you deserted, and that is kind of uh, humiliating the mandate. That's the okay. narrative they wanted okay. to build. Okay. I think uh, I think nobody expected this twist and turn because somewhere at some point of time, even I thought that you know after Uddhav Thakre going that emotional thing, you know this is swinging his way. Mm-hmm. But after this, I think it is now evenly balanced. Even though I am not still saying it is swinging the completely the other way because the floor party is different from the actual party. And I still genuinely believe that the Shiv Sainics, at least in the Mumbai region, 
are more emotionally attached to Thakre family than any other alternative Shiv Sena leadership. Okay. So I don't, uh, I don't buy that uh, uh, Akre's hold on the Shiv Sainics, at least within the Mumbai region, it will go down. But yes, outside Mumbai region, it is going to be a problem for the Thakre. Okay. Kumar Ketkar explained to me, now that the Congress party, your party, it has lost power. You were in a coalition for two and a half years with the Udav Thakre, uh, Shiv Sena and uh, of course the NCP. So what happens now? The coalition, you will now sit in the opposition. Big relief. Now you don't have to exercise power anymore. At the outset, I must say, I will not call it Tamasha because it was direct politics. And now it depends on techno legal issues and not just on politics. Now, techno legal issues will take over the politics, but that apart, the intention of all the three factors that is NCP, Congress, and even Uddhav Red Shiv Sena was to keep BJP out of power. That was the only minimum program. That was the only common minimum program. Rest of the things followed. So at that point of time, they succeeded for two and a half years. And now that that particular program has been ruptured, I don't think any of these three factors will be happy about it. Because BJP has come back, though through back door, and not necessarily on their own, but by the faction of the Shiv Sena again and BJP taking a secondary role, a subsidiary role. But the question is, the the, the question is, Kumar Saab, the question is, Mr. Ketkar, that your coalition was not able to anticipate what was going on. You failed. That's the reality. Was well, unnatural, right? You are suggesting that our coalition was unnatural, correct? It was unnatural. The fact of the matter is unnatural or natural. That's what I'm trying to say, that it may appear to be unnatural or even irrational, but the agenda was to keep BJP out of power and to that extent they succeeded. Now, so many so-called unnatural and irrational events have taken place, coalitions have been formed. In 1977, the so-called Janata Party was the most irrational ever coalition formed in which there was Jansang initially, and not BJP was not at form, Jansang, Swatantra, Socialists, supported by Communists. Simil similarly, VP Singh's government was also support supported by the BJP as well as the Communists. So, unnatural so-called irrational coalitions is part of the political game that depends on the common agenda of the parties concerned forming into coalition. So I don't think it was a tamasha. I don't think it was only an experiment. It was only an effort to keep BJP out, to which they succeeded for two and a half years. And now everything has changed. All the parameters, all the parameters of the political coalition have changed. And yet again, there is a coalition. And do you think this coalition is natural and rational? If the NCP Congress and Shiv Sena led was unnatural, Eknath Shinde and Devendra Pandis, Alliance is no less irrational than that. But there again, they want to keep the NCP and Congress out. So their agenda is similar. No, but the question is, but let me ask you the question, uh, Yashwant. The fact is that in your view, how this, the way this whole operation played out, I mean, clearly the BJP was on board right from the start behind Eknath Shinde, hand-holding him, taking him to Guwahati, Surat, Goa, etc., etc. Now, would you say that this was a flawlessly executed, uh, first of all, flawlessly thought out? I mean, whose brainwave is this? Who is the mastermind? I think more than the mastermind, you see, uh, it is so easy to say, say that BJP masterminded it. But the core thing is that, that the big chunk, and it is impressive big chunk, 38, 39, 40 MLAs coming out of, you know, 50 something. It's not a smaller one. Earlier, it was used to be called that, okay, 11, 12, 15 people are there, no, no, 20 people are there, no, no, 25 people are there, no, 30 people are there. I mean, the number kept on swelling like anything, you know, uh, just like the floods in the Brahmaputra. So, there was something problematic and I tell you what the problem was. Shiv Sena leadership wanted to prove a point to the BJP, see our politics can run even without you. If you are not coming along with us, we can look out for other alternative and even the Congress is now willing to come to us. I can be the chief minister, point well taken. You know, every political party, every politician on earth has full rights to dream 
and try to become chief minister, prime minister, whatever that's it. And full points for them doing that politics. Mm -hmm. But after proving the point, the wisdom should have prevailed that, okay, this is the point proven, but our natural alliance, ideological and everywhere, lies somewhere else. And this uh, alliance does not have electoral sustainability into it. And I believe that even Kumar Saab will agree with me on that. You know, he would be actually relieved to a large extent that they don't have to contest the election as a Shiv Sena alliance partner. That would have been problematic. You know, uh, it would not have been a natural alliance. Because for all said and done, yes, the BJP or Bharti Jansang, when they entered into coalition politics with the left front, either in 77 or in 89, it was chalk and cheese because none of them actually contested against each other. They did not have support base. You know, left front was Kerala and West Bengal where BJP was absent. BJP was in the Hindi heartland where the left front was absent. So even though they were kind of uh, getting into a coalition alliance with uh, uh, Janta Dal or, or, or United Front, they were not overlapping as far as the mass or, or the support base is concerned. Mm -hmm. While in case of Shiv Sena and in the NCP or in case of Congress, it was a direct contest. That's right. The problem was, while the point of Uddhav Thakre ji was well taken and proven, the majority of the MLAs after two and a half years were going to see that, okay, Daisal beat gaya, bhai, ab election larna hai. Election larna hai, to jeetenge kaise? No, yes, yes, yes. Yes. no, no, Yashwan, all this is fine. This is what they, this is how it unfolded inside the Ekta Chinde camp. But it's very exactly. clear. That Mr. Shinde was in touch with the BJP, with Devendra Fadnavis or other BJP leaders right from the start. In fact, Mahesh Jetwalani told me that, that Egnat Shinde and Devendra Fadnavis has been in, have been in touch for the last two years. Of course, yes, right from the day when they were in touch. And that is why not even a single point of time, you will find it very difficult that to, uh, to search out a comment against the BJP by, by Egnat Shinde while he was in power. Mm -hmm. So that, that much he maintained, you see that, that was, I think people were kind of waiting at some point of time, she said, to get back along with the BJP. What they were not expecting that will happen without Uddhav mm -hmm. It was only a matter of time, you know, I understand that, that the experiment and I agree with Kumar Saab that in politics, there is nothing in a permanent thing, you know, their main task was to keep the BJP out. And I agree with him that, you know, they did something just like the BJP, PDP alliance did not work out. This was not supposed to work out. It's fine. But there are short term gains and the long term problems into this. Okay. What I feel this entire fiasco, Jyoti, and this probably Kumar Saab might tell it more. I mean, even though he might disagree with me, I genuinely believe the biggest loser in this game has not, not Shiv Sena, but Congress. It went into that alliance taking off the entire uh, agenda of secularism to multiple down levels that now you have been into power with Shiv Sena once and for all, you cannot really, you know, ask BJP that you guys are doing that kind what of do you thing. Think, what do you think, Kumar Saab? Do you think that you were, do you think that your hands are tainted now? You have touched the Shiv Sena. It is a Hindutva party. You were in power with it, with it for two and a half years. You were in bed with it for two and a half years. Do you feel that the Congress has lost by participating in this coalition? Well, I don't think uh, who has lost and who has won because basically that question will be decided not only electorally but politically. The simple point is, let us compare in 1977 to 1979 to take Yashwan Deshmukh's point further. The weakest link was Charan Singh. And Congress helped Charan Singh, the man, Rajna Ryan, who had always fought Indira Gandhi legally and politically and ideologically also, was the main person to topple Moraji Desai government. And Charan Singh government was formed, which was actually, which collapsed within just five minutes of parliament convened. So that time also, it was kind of game. Similarly no, but sir, played. sir, explain to me what is happening today. The fact is, for I'm the last telling you, I'm telling you, so similar things have happened. Okay. BJP also saw, you were talking about Eknath Shinde. BJP also saw the weakest link was Eknath Shinde. Because Eknath Shinde was unhappy with those, with those leadership. So BJP started tapping perhaps two years or two and a half years ago, Eknath Shinde. And that's why entire BJP campaign during last two and a half years, when they were talking against you, Sina, they were talking against everybody, including Uddhav's wife and Uddhav's brother-in-law. But they were not criticizing one moment 
Eknath Shinde and his friends or his colleagues. Eknath Shinde's followers were actually kept out of the campaign against them. While Anil Parab was campaigned, Rashmi's brother was, you know, attacked. Everybody in the Shiv Sena was under radar, including Sanjay Rao, but not Eknath Shinde. Because they were working, quote-unquote, working on Eknath Shinde for the future possible plan. Now, who decided the plan? I think it is clearly Amit Shah and Modi. Without them, nothing will work here. But they require an agent here in Maharashtra, and that was Devendra Fernandes. Now, therefore, Devendra Fernandes thought that very morning he told that I am taking the oath in the evening. And he could not, because suddenly the order came from Delhi that he is not going to be taken. And then he said, I am not going to be part of the government at all. And then sir, within two hours, he changed his mind and not actually changed his mind. He was forced to change his mind and became uh, deputy chief minister. Now that, according to majority of the people, all supported the RSS, BJP, and everybody feels that this was one of the greatest humiliation in political life of Devendra Fernandes. But why did he take the humiliation in stride? He has not taken it in stride. But why he has accepted that humiliation? Because in the BJP, the structure, the hierarchy is like that, that they cannot afford to refuse. And similarly, the same things have happened even for Eknath Shinde. Eknath Shinde originally wanted, he was very happy to become chief minister of his own with BJP supporters joining the cabinet and Devendra Pandit is not joining the cabinet. Suddenly now they have a deputy chief minister who is going to be quote unquote politically equally strong because he has a large base in the, uh, in the government. He okay. has 106 people and Eknath Shinde has got only 40 people and plus independent. So Eknath Shinde suddenly realized, though he is a chief minister, he is becoming a subsidiary. They went up and realized that he is a deputy chief minister right. and he is not the chief minister. So both of them are actually weakened by this particular process. And okay. therefore, it is extremely difficult to say what is going to be the electoral or political future of both because both of them have been weakened by their own respective parties. Okay. Then let us not forget like that. Yeah. And therefore, that and Uddhav Thakre's personal image outside Shiva Sena is much larger today. Much larger today, much larger today than of Devendra Fernandes, who's, who's actually image has fallen down. Uh, Mr. Ketkat, I think those are fascinating points that you're making. And I think the question to you, Yashwant, is the, the point that Ketkat have raised, which is that this has been a humiliation for Devendra Fernandes. I think he's right. The fact is that Devendra Fernandes expected to be Chief Minister of Maharashtra. Whatever it is said and done, what happened with Ignat Shinde, etc., but he was not made the chief minister. So would you agree? Would you say that this has uh, been a humiliation for him? Well, it's a... Okay, let me put it this way. He, Ketka Sam is absolutely right. He was look, analyzing this entire game uh, through the prism of individualities or individuals. Mm -hmm. The question here is this entire uh, fight war of the long-term uh, uh, perspectives of Maharashtrian politics is not about individuals at all, at, at least not in the BJP camp. You know, when the party is always made, yes, the party is always that. made up of individuals. You have problems. No, the more I you understand use that. I understand that. But when BJP formed the government on its own seven years back in 2015, nowhere near Devan Farnavis was projected as the chief minister. People did not give a mandate in the name of Devan Farnavis for seven years back. Two years, two and a half years back, yes, he was an incumbent chief minister and he asked for a mandate and he got the mandate. Please remember, people of Maharashtra voted for the UT with the full majority under the leadership of Devin But for the last two weeks, what yeah. Devendra Fadnavis has done, he's basically helped Eknath Shinde split. He's speaking again. I'm, I'm talking of the larger game because, you know, I'm, I think I haven't got answer for the point which I raised. Ketkarji correctly stated about the Charan Singh and again those individualistic problems. But see the larger aspect of it. No, when the BJP went for a, an alliance with the left and the socialists and everything on the anti-Congress platform. No, I will ask. No, no. I will ask Kumar Ketkar the question about the Congress Party whether it has, um, you know, its own ideology has been diluted or not. But the question to you right now is that even if you are saying that the BJP doesn't work on individuals, I think in this particular case, Devendra Fadnavis was quite surprised himself. It's quite obvious that he was might surprised. have, might have been. But but the fact that he is pretty much playing the hardball along with the party, he is pretty much in there. It's for us to speculate, Jyoti. Okay. Well, he is very upset, very angry. He is not being the chief. Of course, anybody who will not be made chief minister, he would be disappointed. But he, 
A more important point is that he is playing the ball along with the policy taken by his party leadership. So, he what is the, the why? Party and the leadership and the mother organization will be standing by him in the long term. He is a young guy. He knows. Uske samne puri zindagi padi hai rajniti karne ke liye, and he will be taken care of. Problem is that when individuals inside the party do not see a future for themselves. That is where the problem happens. Even the Devendra Fernandez, even after this so-called humiliation, still sees a future for him that he will be rewarded at some point of time, and his future is secure within the party structure, within the organization. I think structure. that's a fair point. That's a very fair point, Mr. Kitkar. The question is that the Congress Party today is, you know, you join hands with the Shiv Sena, a Hindutva party, a Hindutva plus plus party. Your hands are tainted. By the this, according to your own ideology, your hands are tainted by the party. You have lost the most in this coalition. Jyoti, in what way Sharad Pawar's party at that point of time, led by Ajit Pawar, was compatible with Devendra Fernandez, who took over and was sworn in in the morning at seven o'clock with Ajit Pawar as deputy chief minister? Ajit Pawar belonged to Congress first and NCP later. And they are completely against the politics of BJP. But Devendra Fadnis would not mind joining hand with Ajit Pawar. Forget ideology, forget political. At that point of time, they could not get the adequate numbers, and the government collapsed within three days. Perhaps because of Sharad Pawar, perhaps because of Sanjay Raut, perhaps because of BJP could not hold on to their position. The point is the compatibility, ideological or political, did not matter. Just recently, two and a half years ago, when Ajit Pawar was deputy chief minister, deputy chief point. minister. Fair point. But so the point today, is similarly, huh, similarly today, now huh, Eknath yeah. Shinde and uh, Devendra Pradesh together or BJP Sena together earlier also, they are not compatible alliance partners. But no, no, that's fine. The, Kumar said the question is not about the BJP and the Shinde faction. The question is no, about... Your question, the was, your question was how come BJP and Congress could uh, get, get along? And uh, no, for Congress... No, 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 that's fine. No, no, the question is right now. I've, I've heard what you said earlier. I heard what you said earlier, and you made a fair point about the humiliation of Devendra Fadnavis. I think that's a completely fair point. That's well a taken point. Yeah, that's a fair point. I'm taking that point along. My yeah, but the question to you, the question is that the Congress party today, I think it was a very interesting move by the Congress two and a half years ago to join hands in a coalition like this when your high command in Delhi did not want it. And the high command was saying, you should not touch the Hindutva plus plus party called the Shiv Sena. But the Congress party in Maharashtra went ahead. It was a very, no, no, no. It was a very it not, interesting move. It's only partly correct information. Congress was divided in the political assessment of the situation. Maharashtra Congress, being in Maharashtra, thought that to keep BJP out, we have to go along with the Shiv Sena faction or whatever Shiv Sena at that point of time led by Udo Takri. Whereas Delhi, there were two options, whether we should go with Shiv Sena at all in the first place because Shiv Sena was always opposed to the Congress and in fact the ideology of Hindutva that Bhadakar actually practiced could be dangerous for Congress in other parts of India. And therefore there was a division of opinion on political strategy and political assessment. But that did not mean that the High Command opposed or High Command supported because High Command was constantly discussing that is why it took something like three weeks for them to come to a decision. So it's all right. There will be always but today do you so feel that the Maharashtra Congress do you do you Jyotiva discussion, similar discussion, similar strategic discussion that took place in BJP has not come out. In Congress, everything comes out instantly. We don't know what was the difference of opinion between Nadda, Shah, Padanvis, Modi and others. We don't know because there is no knowledge. BJP is such a steel frame that it will not come out easily unless it will come out as a gossip or complete anticipated logic. But in Congress, everything comes out open and therefore the differences of two perceptions we are openly discussed in the media as well as today, in the party. But today, do you feel that the Maharashtra Congress two and a half years ago when you went ahead and joined the coalition, do you feel that you are vindicated by that decision or do you feel you have lost? I think they have, they have been vindicated and I think they will fight together. At present, the MVA, which is Mahavika Sagadi, is NCP, Congress and Shiv Sena. Now, there is a possibility of NCP getting split or some members of the NCP joining BJP, which has happened before when Ajit Pawar joined. But the point is, at present, what about Congress, the Congress stands with Uddhav Thakre as the leader of the MVA at this point of time. 
Do you, do you feel that the Congress might also split and part of the Congress could I also don't split? think. I don't think Congress may split. Individuals in Congress might, but split is possible only in NCP. But, but as long as Sarat Pawar is in action, I don't think he will allow that. Well, the fascinating points, I think, raised by Mr. Kitkar. But Yeshwant, you know, he's making very fair points. I think he's... he's no, being... he's making fair points. I mean, who can very... who cannot agree with what the point Mr. Kitkar, even as a journalist, as a politician, whichever way you look at him, I mean, he's yeah. making fair points. My only humble submission is, sir, that only two accounts. Number one, if I am anti-communist and I have to defeat the communist, I am not going to, going to form an alliance with CPI Mali. That's the point number one. You know... That uh, because I am anti-communist, then I will form an alliance with CPI ML because I am anti-communist. Similarly, to defeat the BJP, I am not going to form an alliance with Shiv Sena. That's on the further right of the BJP. That's an uh, inherent ideological positioning. That's the problem. And in the coalition politics, I totally agree with you with the kind of politics that Congress probably did to keep the BJP out. And that's a fair enough point. But in a, such kind of coalition, generally speaking, Kitra Saab, politics is like one step backward and two step forward when you come out of that alliance. So BJP took a one step backward in 77 and 89 and then it came out two step forward while filling up the vacuum of the anti-Congress platform. I don't know why, but somehow I'm feeling that in copying that experiment of on, 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 anti, uh, on the anti-BJP platform, saying that, okay, just like this anti-Congressism happened in 77 and 89, the Time is right for entry BJPism. I understand that. But in my limited understanding, in the long term, it might come out as one step forward and two step backward rather than one step backward and two step forward for the Congress. You are right. Eventually, it will be electoral uh, assessments and other things that will come into play. But at this point of time, somehow I feel like yeah, Congress ko hasil kya hua isme. You know, I mean, at this point of time, I feel like what exactly no, no, but Congress gain out of it? No, but the Congress so, gained the Congress gained by being in power for two and a half years and by keeping that's right. But Jody, nobody, look at this way. Okay, let me put the reframe this thing. Even if Congress gained in that way, is anybody discussing right now the role of Congress in Maharashtra politics? You are discussing the humiliation of Parnavis, the adjustment of uh, uh, Shinde, <coughs> the humiliation of Uddhav Thakre, and the Sharad Pawar playing the games. Along with the two master players of uh, BJP, where is Congress in the picture? Congress is not even being absolutely talked about as playing any game out here. Mr. The Gipper? Maharashtra game, as we talk about, was considered to be a game of Sharad Pawar, not even a Congress. Yeshwan, Yeshwan, only one point. It is not analogous to say that anti Congressism is equal to anti BJPism. Okay. Every single party, from south to north to east to west, which is in the so-called anti-BJP front, have associated, hobnob, or have been working with BJP. Anna DMK was with BJP, DMT was with BJP, Chandrabha was with BJP, KCR was BJP, even Mamata was in the BJP government, Akali Dal was in BJP. Every single party which professes itself as anti-BJP have actually not only associated, actively worked in the BJP-led governments. So there is nothing like anti-BJPism is equal to anti-Congressism. Anti-Congressism has been the staple diet of all the parties in India. Sir, the question is, Kitkar sahab, no, no, one second. Kitkar, Kitkar sahab. All no, no, the no, parties no. in India are anti <laughs> Even Farooq Abdullah was in the BJP. Court. Yes, Kitkar sahab, but the point is that how many Congress governments are there left in the country? Maharashtra is the richest state in India. You were a part of that. You were a part of that coalition which ran Maharashtra. Today, the Congress is out of Maharashtra. So that that's a truism. That's a truism. I accept it. Congress accepts it. So therefore, the Congress is much more diminished today. Yes, much more diminished. And Congress is going through the worst patch of their political life. So Congress is diminished is a fact. And Congress knows it. Everybody knows it. It's in public domain. I mean, everybody sees it every day that Congress is diminished. So the question is, how do you fight in that diminished status with what agenda? So, if the agenda is to keep the so-called Hindutva communal politics out, we will associate with anybody who says, who have been always anti-Congress before, but who are ready to work today with any one of them who are ready to fight Hindutva forces. So, that's okay. I don't think there is anything, any irrationality in it or there is 
you know, kind of opportunism in it. Okay. As long as, because Congress has always practiced anti-Hindutva politics. Anti-Hindutva politics has been the Congress stand. But you, always. No, but I mean, you join hands with the Hindutva party. But, you know, I think you're making, at least you're, you're admitting that the Congress is a far more diminished uh, uh, political party today. No, I mean, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's a fair point, Gitkar sir. But I just want to ask, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Yashwan Deshmukh, a couple of questions. The first is, do you think that by making Eknath Shinde the chief minister, actually what the BJP is trying to do is doing a Sharad Pawar on, Balasa, on uh, uh, Udhav Thakre. So they want, to, they want to completely demolish the Udhav Thakre faction and Correct. take it away. And uh, that is, that is a fair has, assessment. And, and that is a BJP plan. plan. That is I mean, a BJP. Yeah, this is why this is why we all love Kumar Sahib, you know, because he speaks. That is mind. a BJP plan. And it is so difficult, uh, you know, uh, the things that he said so point blank. Uh, it's almost next to impossible to listen to from any Congress sympathizer or supporter. Leave aside a Congress member of Parliament. So I, uh, I, I mean, that's that's why he, 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 I, I, I respect him. You respect him. Uh, coming down to the question, you know, um, I, I kind of uh, see that okay, this thing might be looked down upon that, okay, BJP tried to do a power on uh, this thing and that thing. But the more I kind of analyze that, there are two kinds of Maharashtra's Jyoti. One is the Mumbai Maharashtra and one is outside the Mumbai Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. Rest of the Maharashtra, the contest is actually, Shiv Sena is no more there that much. The contest is between the BJP versus the NCP plus Congress. <laughs> it's not that the Congress is dead or anything. In outside Mumbai, it is like that. Within the Mumbai region, Jyoti, oddly enough, in the last five years back, the Mumbai municipality election, it was a contest of BJP versus Shiv Sena. Shiv Sena won 84, BJP won 82 seats, standing all alone. And NCP Congress was wiped out. So I think it's like coming down to the core of the core contest. Uh, the, the analyst in me kind of analy now analyzing it in two different scenarios. I see... With this experiment, without this experiment, no matter what is the outcome of this experiment, the outside Mumbai rest of Maharashtra, the contest will become more and more complete bipolar between BJP on one pole and Congress and CP on the other pole. Depending on which region you are in Western Maharashtra or Marathwada or Vidarbha, in depending on... So the, the Shiv Sena is finished? Shiv Sena outside Mumbai is going to be really, really in a meltdown mode. Really in a meltdown mode. But within the Mumbai region... The contest and which is the very impending contest within the six months as and when the municipal elections happen, it is going to be a very harsh bipolar contest between the BJP and the real Shiv Sena. Now, we have to see how technical legal angles, as Kumar Saab just said, that how it plays out on the symbols and other things. But my limited understanding, and Kumar Saab can correct me, I still feel within the Mumbai region, the Shiv Sena's emotional attachment is still with the Matushri. I don't see them moving away from that. So, Shiv Sena still has a very fighting chance and they have to fight like hell. They have to fight like hell to save their bastion in Mumbai. But all in all, uh, I, I genuinely believe that uh, this, this, this entire thing, the only party probably more than the BJP, which is ending, going to eventually end up gaining a lot is NCP. The kind of hold and the kind of thing, which they, even as in the party or as in the main opposition party. You see how smartly it is. When they were in the government, they were actually running the government for all practical matters. Yeah. All right. And now outside the government, they are going to be the leader of opposition. Okay. Okay. So this is how I see it that the part two parties which are gaining out of this entire thing are NCP and the BJP. Big time. And the put two parties which are going to, I can see that they have lost a lot in this experiment are the Congress and the Shiv Sena led by Uddhav Thakir. So that is how I look at it. Mr. Kitkar, what do you say? Yeah, I think partly is right. And I'm not saying partly is right, means partly is wrong. I'm merely putting across the details. Like Shivasena will not, that is Uddhav led Shivasena, will not perform well in Thane, which is a major center of power. Mm -hmm. But it will, similarly, Eknath Shinde will not be able to perform better in Mumbai because Mumbai is the fountainhead of Shiv Sena. Absolutely. Mumbai is the fountainhead of the so-called Marathi sentiment which was declining over a period. And therefore, Uddhav Thakre may have better number of votes, better number of supporters, better organizational skills in Mumbai. And Uddhav will hardly have anybody in Thane. 
In fact, Uddhav has not been able to find a Thane president of the Shiv Sena, Uddhav led Shiv Sena. So now the question, there are two questions. One is techno-legal, like who is the real Shiv Sena? Like in 1969, the question was who is the real Congress? Or again in 1980, who was the real Congress? So similarly, now who is the real Shiv Sena will depend on election commission and the courts. Or finally, if it goes on to the people, people's verdict, then it is very difficult for Eknath Shinde to win votes in Khandesh, to win votes in Maratwara, to win votes in Vidarbha. Eknath Shinde does not have much traction there. There, the traction is for Uddhav Thakre. That doesn't mean that Uddhav Thakre can win on his own, even 84 seats, which very correctly has mentioned. But the point is, who will be better in which part of Maharashtra? He is absolutely right in saying that urban Maharashtra, that is Mumbai-led urban, and rural Maharashtra, Pune led rural or Kolapur led rural, they are two different political entities, completely political identities, different in rural Maharashtra. And again, in rural Maharashtra, there are subcultures like rural Palatwala and rural Vidarbha. So, where actually Shiv Sena itself did not have much traction. In, for instance, the Marathi question, Marathi identity question does not figure in the conversation or in politics or in sociology of Vidarbha at all. In Marathwala, it does not because Marathwala was governed by Nizam before part of Hyderabad state, their Urdu is quite common and therefore even Maratwada does not actually encourage the so-called identitarian sentiment of Marathi. So essentially it is Western Maharashtra and Mumbai and therefore what Yeshul says is correct, it is not proper to you know, compare, the, you know, continue to discuss whole of state as one unified entity. It is not. It is a fractured state and in that fractured state there will be fractured mandate and we should not conclude on the fractured mandate basis who is more popular than who is Okay, Kitkat sir, one last question to you and that is that what is the BJP plan? Does it want to finish Uddhav Thakre uh, Shiv Sena? Yeah, that is absolutely clear. They want to finish Uddhav Thakre Shiv Sena and if possible, install Eknath Shinde Shiv Sena as the real Shiv Sena. Whether that will happen is depend on techno-legal aspects or on actually people's aspects, but that is their agenda and that agenda they are working for but I have a feeling, I have a feeling, only an inference, nothing more, speculation, that uh, BJP will not wait for 2024 because Maharashtra elections are scheduled in 2024 December, uh, November, November, December. I think BJP will plan out in such a way that uh, the elections in Maharashtra held before along with Eknath Shinde. BJP will hold on to Eknath Shinde, but the elections will be held before so they can finish Uddhav Thakre in that election and claim total victory for the new alliance of BJP and Eknath Shinde. Whether that works out or not is immaterial. Even BJP will gamble about it. But they can and they will because they don't want to take chances in November 2024. Okay. I think therefore elections, midterm elections in Maharashtra are distinctly possible. One can be wrong because this is insults. Right. Last the question to you, uh, Yashwant. The question is that the way it's all unfolding, do you think that the BJP will have the ro remote control? Eknath Shinde is Chief Minister. But will Devendra Fadnavis have the remote in his hand? Why remote? They have the TV, remote, trolley, whatever you can get, everything in their room right now. I mean, it's not just the remote. It's everything in their hand. I mean, uh, of course, I mean. Uh, so it, is Shinde just a Mokhota? Yes, of course, yes. I mean, no two opinion about it. And I guess that he would be happy with that. Let's Let's be fair with that as well, you know. Any person's ambition would be foremost ambition to reach that top sport. Just like Ketkarji said, you know, starting the stroking the ambition of Chaudhary Charan Singh and right up to VP Singh. We have seen people do anything and everything just to become on the top once. Uh, Chandrasekharji did not become a minister all his life. He has said, he, I, I just want to become the prime minister. Even if for a few months, doesn't matter. So, Shindri is not going to complain that he does not have any ministry or anything. He is just happy being the chief minister. And if the BJP assures him, see, leave the ministries, you remain the chief minister, he is going to play the ball. And it's only a question how uh, uh, Farnavis looks at it, that whether he is controlling the real power, even after being the deputy CM, but full credits to him that he is playing the ball as per the rules laid by his own organization. You cannot flaw him with that, you know, Absolutely. and everybody has a right to be uh, uh, unhappy about it as well, but still he is playing the ball correct. So, all in all, I believe that BJP has complete hold of uh, Maharashtra at this point of time, but the real fight for the Sena thing will be happening in the Mumbai municipality election. As Ketkarji correctly said, 
Thane is going to go completely Shinde way along with the BJP, but it is the real Mumbai where the emotional connect of uh, Matoshri which works, and we have to wait for that. Whether BJP actually wants to finish up with the and everything once and for all, it totally depends what kind of votes Mr. Uddhav Thakre gathers. Whether he still holds it up and says, right. BJP, you cannot finish me, then it would be a different ball game. But if the BJP really comes on top in Mumbai, then it will be a different ball game. Right. Fascinating discussion as always. And thank you for this uh, chapter and verse. Uh, lessons in politics, at least in Maharashtra politics, to both of you, Yashwan Deshmukh and Kumar Ketkar. Thank you so much for joining me on the print debates. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Yogi and Yashwan. Thank you.